Well, good evening. It's good to be here again. Um, tonight I'm going to talk on a subject that sort of hits home, you know, and it hits home to every one of us. Um, I've used this scripture many times, and yet, Maybe it might not apply in this situation, but it does. Um, my grandson and his father had is in the process of uh, having their pet dog put down due to cancer. Um, he was a, um, a shelter dog and he was abused, uh, very strongly he was abused and I think at, I don't know when it was and how long they had him, but they went to the shelter and they found the dog and they just picked that dog and that dog has been a member of the family, you know, and uh, uh, the dog, it, it was getting old. I mean, it was getting a little old, I guess. And uh, he ended up being diagnosed with some kind of cancer. Um, they would bring him out here, and I would always sort of play rough with him, and he liked playing rough. And we, we had some good quality time, you know, with the dog. And, you know, I'm sure that, that there will be a loss, um, of the dog. There's no doubt about that. I mean, it was, it was, it's a member of the family. Um, but I started thinking about, you know, the dog is an animal. And I don't know, I don't read too much about animals in the Bible. No, uh, I, I just don't, I can't recall. Maybe somebody could remind me of certain animals that were in the Bible. And I realized that there was animals when Jesus was born. But far as the loss of animals, I don't really know fully what the scripture says about that. Um, you know, when this puppy was born, it had a life, but it had a hard life. He was brutalized. He was shot. He had to have surgery on his mouth. Um, somebody, I think, had shot him with some buckshot, I think. And my son-in-law had to spend tons of money on the dog to get him healthy. Uh, he didn't have a very good diet because of the fact that he couldn't eat just table scraps. He had a very limited diet or he would get very sick. And so they had to definitely watch him. They had to not let him have table food. Uh, he would just get madly sick if he was to eat anything wrong. So he had his moments of where I'm sure he didn't feel too happy, but he was in a, a, a happy home. He had a good home life when he got with uh, my family anyway, his, his whole life was turned around for the, for the positive. But he had, this dog had a lot of issues at the very beginning. And no doubt it would be a very much of a loss, you know, for, to lose the dog like that. Uh, he, he looked meaner than he could ever want to be, but he was really just as gentle as a piece of popcorn. I mean, if you looked at him, you wouldn't want to get around him, but 
you just had to know him and, and, and he would love to, to play, but I would sort of make him play in a little bit of a rougher mode, but he never hurt me. He never grabbed me in any way. I mean, we was family. I mean, obviously when, when my grandson come, normally he would come. We would dog sit for them when they was gone somewhere that we would, we would dog sit, you know. So, I mean, it was a member of our little family as well. And, um, you know, it would be a definite loss. But you know what? Life goes on. Um, that goes for people that pass away. The Bible talks about death. Um, I read tonight where I think it was in Acts. I don't remember what chapter it was, but it was where Stephen had preached his sermon and how he called them a bunch of stiff necked people and they got angry and they took him out of the city and they stoned him. And the Bible says that he looked up into heaven and, and, you know, I don't have my Bible open to there right now, but Stephen basically was was killed by a bunch of stones, and the Bible says that he fell asleep. Um, I mean, he went through a, a, a bad time, but see, the difference between a family member of a pet and a family member of a of a person is totally different. Uh this man Stephen had a soul. I don't read anywhere in the scripture that I'm aware of where animals have a soul. Um I'm not saying that there's not animals in the place of heaven. There very well could be. Um I just don't know. I think that God put his spirit into human form and it depends on what we do with that holy spirit that is welcome to come into our life we can we can choose to welcome him or we can choose not to welcome him it's really left up to an individual you know somebody offered me money i have a right to re- receive it or I have a right to reject it and so but there's a verse that I've used this verse and I think this verse applies to how I'm going to use it even tonight in Hebrews 9 and 27 and as it is appointed unto men once to die but after this, the judgment. It's appointed that men is going to die. But men has a soul. That dog Toby didn't have a soul. Was he loved? Yes. Is he loved today? Yes. Would I do what I could to love on him and protect him, even if he was here right now? Yeah, I would. I mean, the only thing I possibly could do would be to rub his head and to rub his side and to comfort him and to let him know that somebody is with him. That's all they're going to be able to do is to comfort him the best they know how. But in this verse right here, it says, and as it is appointed. See, God knows that man has an appointment date with death. When I was born, I don't remember what time I think my mama told me I was born. But I was born on the 18th of November of 1958. God knew when I would be born into the physical world. And God also knows when this 62-year-old man today that is talking to you in the camera is going to meet that appointment day with death. 
And you know, this dog of theirs, I believe, had an appointment day with death. But here's the difference. The difference is, the verse says, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. See, this dog won't go through judgment because this dog was never given a soul. Now, am I being mean to the dog? No. This dog is an animal. But men have the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of God comes into a man, and what men do with that Spirit is a choice that they make, whether they take a hold of the Spirit of God or they basically reject the Spirit of God. God always does his part. Always. Always. It says here in this verse, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, after death, the judgment. See, the judgment is for the rewards that we earn down here in this life. If we are in the Lord and we know him, we're not going to be judged when we get to glory on whether we were saved or not. We're going to be, we're going to be judged on our works and the things in this life and the works in this life, a person that has been born from above, born again by the Spirit of God, God knows if that Spirit believed in the Lord Jesus or not. A dog don't have to worry about standing before the judgment of God because there's nothing there that God deems valuable other than the fact that that dog was a pleasure to our family for all these years. I mean, it's really amazing, but, but there's another scripture. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to find it, but for the people that know their Bible, you can almost turn to it. It's back in the Old Testament. Today I went down and I visited with a, man that goes to my church that was sort of one of the founding members of the church and we had a little devotional with him and the subject of death came up I don't really know that it was appropriate or not but it came up and I tried to deal with it the best I could under the circumstances um I might not be able to find this, but there's a verse in Ecclesiastes. And like I said, I might not be able to find it. Um, just as soon as you think that you can't find it. It'll be right here, but I don't want to. Yeah, right here it is. Be sure I turn right to it. In chapter three, this is something that we always um, we always hear. To everything there is a season, a time to every purpose under the heaven. a time to be born, and a time to die. Um, I remember reading um, the verse to the man today when we was doing the Bible study, and it was over in Psalm 
chapter 90. This is what I read to this man. He's 86 years old, by the way. It says in verse 10 of Psalm 90, it says, The days of our years are three score years and ten. See, the normal time of life for a man is three score, which is 60 years, 20 years per score, plus 10 is 70 years. So 70 years would be considered a man's value of life. And then it doesn't stop there. And then the verse goes on and says, And if by reason of strength they be four score years, meaning depending on the quality of your strength that you have, that you're still functionable, that you're still active, that you still move around. See, my son-in-law took that dog of his for a walk today. Now, they had to give him medication to get him to walk good, and he enjoyed getting out and walking. But common logic will tell you, that he's not going to be able to do that very much anymore because his life is about over with. And the point that I'm bringing out is that if it's by strength of us, God will grant man another 10 years. So you figure three score and 10 is 70 years. And then by chance or by strength, they be four score years. That's 80 years old. Now, putting it back in that dog's ability to live all these years, I don't know how old this dog was far as dog years. I have no clue at all. I wouldn't even be able to take a wild guess of just how old this dog is. But it says here, Yet is there strength, labor, and sorrow. Meaning that man that is 86 years old, the longer he lives into his 80th year, and he's 86 now. He's six years beyond, and relatively he has lived somewhat of a um, a sorrow-free lifestyle. He's got a great family. He has people that take care of him. And so, therefore, yes, he's had issues with his health lately. But you know what? According to this, it says, yet is there strength, labor, and sorrow. So the older you get, the older, the more likely you're going to have labor and sorrow. And I don't know how old this dog is. And then the Bible says, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. See, that dog named Toby is not going to fly away. He's going to be disposed of, just like we do on anyone else that we love. I love my daddy. I watch my daddy be buried under the sod. I watch my granny being buried under the sod. I mean, I can sit here and name you uh, funerals after funerals of people that I've attended funerals of people that passed away and died. But the promise that we have, if we're in the Lord, is that we are soon cut off from this world here and we fly away because of the Spirit of God, the Spirit that is in the person that knows the Lord Jesus. I just pray today that you know the Lord Jesus. I mean, I would have never dreamed I'd have come out here and talked so much about a dog. But you know what? That dog was loved. He was a member of the family. He still is a member of the family. 
But the truth of the matter is, when his breath goes away and they put him down and they put him to sleep, he's not going to know that he's dead. He's going to basically cease to breathe. He he's gonna he's gonna not breathe anymore. But the Christian is gonna be away from the sorrow, according to this verse. He's gonna be away from the sorrow and labor. And when they get cut off, they fly away. So the Christian has something to look forward to. Is death part of the Christian's life? Yeah. There's people that are in the cemetery. I've got uncles. I've got aunts. I remember I have a beautiful aunt that passed away not all that long ago. A beautiful lady. But you know what? She's in the presence of the Lord. Her spirit flew away to a God that loved her. And what you got to ask yourself is you got to tell yourself, am I ready to go when my time of sorrow comes and my time to be cut off? Because there is a cutoff date. Remember what we read a minute ago. It's appointed unto man once to die. But then the judgment. See, we, we stand before judgment of God far as our actions and the things that we have done. We don't stand before God on whether we are saved or not. Now we will, later on, we will stand before God on whether we really trust in Him. But if we didn't trust in Him, then we stand before God as well. I just hope this makes a little sense. I'm going to miss that dog, no doubt about it. I just pray for God's comfort during this time that, you know, whatever God wants to get far as his glory, he can get that glory. If you're out there tonight, you don't know Jesus, you don't know what glory is all about. You need to know Jesus before he comes again. ElderlyMinistry.com is the website. There you'll find a phone number. Leave a message. I'll be glad to get back with you. Thank y'all for watching.